So my name is uh, Ola Olshar, and uh, I want to talk about uh, materials used uh, by selected visual artists dealing with the subject of the Anthropocene. Uh, so the uh, use of materials in art related to this theme uh, is uh, very diverse and um, I think it depends on uh, individual uh, preferences and artist styles. Mm, and uh, in this uh, presentation, the focus is uh, on contemporary artists uh, who work with uh, tangible materials. Mm. So um, glass, metal and uh, uh, concrete, for example, are materials that often appear in artistic uh, works dedicated to um, Anthropocene theme and um, artists use them to illustrate the impact of uh, humans on the environment and uh, introdu introduce elements related to industry and uh, urbanization also uh, and technology uh, uh, to their works. Uh, for example, um, Agata Ingarden, uh, she's a young artist. Um, she creates objects and installation uh, by combining industrial materials such as uh, metal, plastic, um, silicon also. Uh, with uh, natural uh, resources and products uh, such as wood, sugar, shells. Uh, her work can be uh, interpreted as a vision of a post-apocalyptic world and um, I think it can also uh, relate to the relationship between nature, uh, human and uh, technology. Um, and this work uh, resembles a civilization, uh, civilizational invention and consists of um, liquid sugar uh, that solidifies into a, uh, a bowl made of uh, shellfish, uh, depending on the temperature. And the whole um, work is supported by uh, uh, sewage pipes. Mm, another artist uh, is uh, Milena Ni, uh, and in her work uh, Fleeting Parts, um, sections of uh, her body till, uh, fill tailored um, empty spaces in uh, expertly cut out, uh, cut out uh, marble. Um, she um, in her work, she studies the relation between matter that uh, surround us um, as humans. And um, for me, it's um, like a work um, about uh, also the relationship between uh, nature and human. Mm. So, um, much of the uh, artwork uh, is based on the use of plastic waste that is collected from uh, beaches, um, uh, rivers and oceans. Uh, and I want to talk about uh, kind of like zero waste art. Mm. And uh, zero waste artists work with a wide range of materials, uh, including plastic bags, um, metal, uh, or discarded fabrics um, and even, uh, for example, uh, food waste. Mm. And they use techniques such as upcycling and uh, recycling, uh, repurposing and uh, creative reuse to transform waste materials into art. Mm. Recycling and upcycling are both methods um, of using materials to reduce waste, but they differ in uh, their approach and the final outcome. Uh, recycling is the process of breaking down and reusing uh, waste materials to create new products, while upcycling involves uh, creative uh, repurposing waste materials into new products uh, that are uh, often uh, higher, uh, higher uh, value. So, um, an example can be uh, Elena Tsui and his work uh, Broken Bridge. Mm, 
uh, broken bridge is uh, uh, 157 foot by 37 uh, foot uh, tapestry made of uh, collected um, from the na natural uh, environment um, preset tins and mirrors. Um, and it was uh, installed um, on the exterior of a building uh, in New York uh, City. Mm. And um, as he says, um, I saw the uh, I saw the battle cuts as relating to the history of Africa, in the sense that when the earliest group of Europeans came to trade, they brought along uh, rum originally from the West Indies that when uh, then went uh, to Europe and finally to Africa as a three legs of the triangular trip. And uh, the drink cups that I use are not made in Europe. They are all made it in Nigeria, but they symbolize uh, bringing together the histories of like um, this uh, two uh, continents. Um, so um, the next artist uh, would be, um, so this is a different uh, view of this uh, installation. And the next artist uh, would be is, uh, Cyril Zakrzewski. Um, uh, he um, um, utilizes uh, recycled plastic in his work. And uh, he collaborates with uh, the company uh, called uh, Boom Plastic, uh, which creates plates from recycled plastic. And uh, in an interview with uh, uh, Design Alive, um, he stated that uh, creating an object using only recycled plastic is uh, quite expensive and demanding because effective recycling is still very, very um, complicated and the final product is ridiculously expensive. Mm. And um, artists uh, use this um, post-consumer waste, um, but uh, art also generates waste too. Um, so the question is, I think, um, how to um, make new object with uh, um, materials that are, uh, I would say, um, that have, uh, that are more responsible, maybe. Um, and I think that it can be um, bioplastic, or like biomaterials. Um, and the, the term refers to building materials um, from living organisms, including plants and animals, and uh, also fungi. Um, so an example um, can be uh, Neri Oxman. Um, and um, oh, I lost the image, uh, but, <laughs> but the next one, is, oh. But it, it's here, <laughs> maybe, I don't know uh, what happened. Um, yeah, so um, another example is Neri Oxman's work with her team, uh, the uh, Mediated Matter Group. Um, it's called Aguahoya, uh, which offers a sustainable material uh, alternative uh, to plastic. And uh, it is made of uh, renewable and uh, biocompatible polymers, uh, like uh, cellulose, um, and pectin and other um, biopolymers, and um, they can be uh, 3D printed uh, into um, objects with uh, high performance and sustainability. And uh, Oxman's work um, often involves the use of organic and biomaterials, as well as innovative, innovative uh, design approach and cutting edge technologies. Um, so this is the next um, photo, it's a pretty printer and so. Um, so the next artist um, 
it's an example of using uh, organic uh, materials in fashion. Uh, it's uh, Heather Ackroyd and Dan Harvey. Um, and their grass coats is a project for Extinction Rebellion at London Fashion Week um, in February uh, 2019. And the artist creates coats um, entirely made of grass using, using a photosynthesis process. Uh, it's um, um, uh, really, um, for me, it's a really interesting uh, art process. They use like a um, chlor process called uh, chlorophyll printing to make the coat uh, templates, which were made of natural fibers like hemp uh, and bamboo. Um, and they uh, applied a liquid uh, containing uh, chlorophyll uh, to the temple, uh, uh, template and which acted as a um, uh, photosynthesis material um, and an image was uh, projected, projected onto the template causing the chlorophyll to react and create a negative image and grass seeds were planted on top and over time the grass grew and took uh, on the negative image created uh, by the chlorophyll forming a living uh, wearable coat. Mm. So um, the photo of um, this code and uh, the uh, materials um, and resources used by artists at up to a very small uh, percentage of the like a total scale of a global waste, uh, which is I think a primary uh, pulled by uh, big companies, um, but um, through their work, um, artists can contribute uh, to changing society's attitudes and stimulating action for the uh, protection uh, of the natural environment, um, which I think in turn can help uh, reduce the exploitation of the, um, uh, our planet. And, and I think that's, uh, uh, that's it.